Hello and welcome to the Mythical Mug Tavern. In this video we will explore the mythical creatures of Wales. Before we start, don't forget to like this video and subscribe, and leave a comment with your favourite mythical creature or a creature you would want to see on the channel. Also, a gentle reminder, the names may twist the tongue of the uninitiated. Apologies for any mispronunciation. Let's begin. Adar Luch Gwyn is a legendary creature from Welsh tradition, described as large and intelligent birds, often associated with griffins. These birds were given to the warrior Drudwas Ap Triffin by his fairy wife. The name Ada Luch Gwyn comes from the Welsh words Ada, bird, Eluch, dust, and Gwyn, wine. These birds were reputed to comprehend human speech and follow any command from their master. However, during a battle with Arthur, Drudwas commanded them to kill the first man entering the fight. Arthur's delay led to the birds turning on Drudwas when he entered first, tearing him apart. The Adar Rhiannon are three magical birds associated with the Queen of Dyfed, Rhiannon, in Welsh mythology. Their enchanting songs have the power to wake the dead and lull the living to sleep. The Adarini Corf, also known as the Corpse Bird, is a bird from Welsh folklore believed to foretell death. It chirps outside the door of a person who is about to die, with its cry resembling the Welsh word duch, meaning come in English. Described as featherless and wingless, it is said to reside in another plane of existence when not delivering its ominous message. References to the Adarini Corf can be found in the Welsh language version of the Bible, and some connect the superstition to the presence of a screech owl, attracted by lights in the room of an ailing person. The Afanc, a lake monster in Welsh mythology, is described as a creature resembling a crocodile, beaver, or platypus. It has been associated with various lakes, including Lynn Leon and Lynn Barfog. Known for preying on those near its lake, the creature's fate varies in different legends. In one tale, a maiden subdues it, and in another, Peridur kills it using an adder stone. Legends attribute its death to King Arthur, with a hoofprint near Lynn Barfog, believed to be connected to its removal. According to Iolo Morganug, the Afanc's thrashings caused flooding, leading to the drowning of most inhabitants of Britain. Another version suggests Hugadan's oxen dragged the Afanc out of Lynn Lyon, rendering it powerless and leading to its demise. The Langanew Yew, an ancient yew tree in Langanew, Conwy, Wales, boasts a fragmented structure with several enormous offshoots and a ground-level girth of 35.3 feet. Local tradition links the nearby church with an ancient spirit called Angeli Stor, believed to foretell the names of parishioners destined to die in the coming year every Halloween. A skeptical local man, Sion Ap Robert, challenged the spirit only to hear his own name called out, leading to his death within the year. The Azrai is an aquatic fairy in English folklore, often depicted as a female residing in lakes. Originating from Robert Williams Buchanan's poem The Asrai in 1872, its folkloric authenticity is debated. Popularized by storyteller Ruth Tung, Asrai stories portray them as timid, beautiful beings with webbed feet and a fear of sunlight. Ruth Tung's tale involves a captured Asrai melting away in the sun, resembling Scandinavian trolls' aversion to daylight. Various retellings emphasize their aversion to human coarseness, often featuring them with fish tails and attempting to lure people into lakes with promises of treasure. If you enjoy the content on our channel, consider subscribing to the Mythical Mug Tavern. Your support means a lot to us. Now let's continue. The Barmouth Monster is a serpentine sea creature that has been spotted off the coast of Wales, particularly in and around the Menai Strait. Descriptions of the Barmouth Monster vary, with some claiming it has a serpentine appearance, while others liken it to a crocodile with footprints as large as those of an elephant. The creature is said to be 10 feet long and is described as having skin resembling that of a dinosaur. Bloduved, the flower-faced figure in Welsh mythology, is created by magicians from oak, broom, 
and meadow sweet flowers to be the wife of Lu Law Gifts. Her story takes a tragic turn as she betrays Lu with Grand Peber, leading to a plot to murder Lu. After orchestrating his death, Lu is restored to human form by Gwydion, and with Gwynedd's support, he reclaims his lands. As punishment, Gwydion transforms Bloduved into an owl, hated by other birds. Her name, meaning flower face, becomes synonymous with the hostility between owls and birds. Brennan Lwyd, the Grey King or Monarch of the Mist, is a legendary figure in Welsh mythology found in mountainous regions. Described as silent, cloaked in mist, and preying on travellers, especially children, consistent accounts exist throughout Wales. In various locations, he's associated with mountains like Snowdon and Cadair Idris. Stories warn against lingering in such areas as Brennan Lwyd might seize those who do. Some versions link him to the Court of the Mist and hunting hounds called the Dogs of the Sky, hinting at connections with the Welsh otherworld, Anwun and the Quan Anwun. Ubach roughly means little scare in English and is part of Welsh folklore. The Bubach are mischievous but friendly hobgoblins, known for doing good turns and chores around homes in exchange for a bowl of cream. Legends suggest that families used to leave out a bowl of cream before bed, finding it gone in the morning with household tasks completed. Carew Castle, once home to the cruel Sir Roland Rees, harbours a chilling tale. In the 17th century, Sir Roland's pet ape, brought from Africa, became an instrument of wickedness. A stormy night unfolded a tragic scene when a local merchant, Horowitz, sought Sir Roland's help over an elopement. Enraged, Sir Roland unleashed his ape on Horowitz, leaving him gravely injured. In a vengeful slumber, Horowitz cursed Sir Roland. To his horror, he awoke to find Sir Roland torn apart, the ape lifeless in the fireplace. Since that night, the castle echoes with the ghostly howls of the ape during stormy nights, awaiting a new master. Kath Palug, also known as Chapelou in French, is a mythical creature from Welsh and French legends. This monstrous cat was born in Gwynedd by the pig Henwyn of Cornwall and later haunted the Isle of Anglesey. According to Welsh legend, it is said to have killed 180 warriors when Sir Kay attempted to hunt it down. The name Cath Palug may mean scratching cat, although its true meaning is uncertain, with theories suggesting connections to actions like hit, strike, cut, lop, scratch, claw, or even dig, pierce. In both Welsh and French accounts, Cath Palug is always localized near water. The Seffel Dibuar is a water horse in Welsh folklore, often considered a counterpart to the Scottish Kelpie. Inhabiting mountain pools, waterfalls, rivers and seashores, it is believed to be a spirit assuming the shape of a horse, enticing unwary travellers to ride it. Once mounted, it would either carry the rider great distances or fly into the sky, ultimately causing the rider's death by dropping them. The Seffel Dibuar could be caught and put to work, but it would always escape and drag its captor to their demise. The creature's temperament varied by region, with some seeing it as malevolent, while others viewed it more positively, considering it a helpful companion to tired travelers. Stories also suggest the ability to shapeshift into other animals, such as a goat or frog, to cause harm. Despite its association with rivers and waterfalls, it was often spotted on seashores, displaying different colors based on weather conditions. There are tales of clergymen riding the Seffel Dibua without danger until reaching their destination. Coblin, mythical gnome-like creatures in Welsh folklore, are believed to inhabit mines and quarries, similar to the knockers in Cornish folklore. Resembling miniature miners, they wear mining outfits and are about half a yard tall. Known for their peculiar knocking sounds, these creatures are said to assist miners in finding valuable ore or treasures. Though they work tirelessly, they never complete their tasks. The term koblinau is connected to the English word goblin and may have Germanic roots akin to the German kobold, possibly via the French gobelin. 
Kionanun, or the Hounds of Anwon in Welsh mythology, are spectral hounds associated with the otherworldly realm of Anwon. Linked to migrating geese due to their nocturnal sounds resembling barking, their hunting grounds include Kader Idris, with their howls foretelling death. In Welsh folklore, a rawn releases these hounds to hunt mundane creatures. Linked with the wild hunt, they pursue wrongdoers until exhaustion, mirroring the fate of their victims. Associated with death, their red ears symbolize this connection, while white signifies the supernatural, often owned by gods or otherworld beings. Dormarch, a hound in Welsh mythology, is typically used for hunting, but is uniquely associated with Gwyn Ap Nudd, the king of the fairy folk. Gwyn Ap Nudd, ruler of Anwen, the Welsh heaven, owns Dormarch and plays a role in escorting deceased warriors to the afterlife in the wild hunt. Described with a single head, two front legs and fish-like tails, Dormark is said to inhabit mountain peaks and ride on the clouds. The fad felon, known as the Yellow Pestilence or Yellow Plague, appearing as a column of watery cloud with one end on the ground and the other high in the air. This pestiferous pillar caused death or sickness to any living creature caught within it, earning its name due to the livid, bloodless complexion of its victims. Physicians attempting to cure the afflicted also succumbed to the plague. Taliesin, the poet, prophesied the death of Maelgwn Gwynedd, King of North Wales, attributing it to a strange creature emerging from the marsh of Rhiannedd with yellow hair, teeth, and eyes. This manifestation was described as a hideous hag or a basilisk, with some accounts mentioning a scaly monster with claws and pestiferous breath. Maelgwn Gwynedd supposedly saw the fad felon through the keyhole of Rose Church, resulting in his death symbolizing a poetic interpretation of his demise due to the plague. The story reflects the common theme of personifying plagues and illnesses in folklore, portraying the Yellow Plague as a horrifying creature, whether depicted as a hag, fluid-like cloud, or basilisk, with the mere sight of it bringing fatal consequences. Galert, a legendary wolfhound, is associated with the village of Bedgelert in Gwynedd, northwest Wales. In this tale, Llywelyn the Great returns from hunting to find his baby missing, the cradle overturned, and Gellert with a blood-smeared mouth. Believing Gellert had devoured the child, Llywelyn kills the dog with his sword. However, after Gellert's dying yelp, Llywelyn discovers the unharmed baby under the cradle, along with a dead wolf that had attacked the child and was killed by Gellert. Overwhelmed with remorse, Llewellyn buries Gellert with great ceremony, leading to the town's name. Despite this, he can still hear Gellert's dying yelp, and from that day on, Llewellyn never smiles again. In the legend of the forgetful lady of Glasrin Lake, Grassy neglects to cover a well one night, causing the waters to overflow and create the lake. Two versions diverge from this point. In one, Grassy becomes a white lady, haunting the area with cries at 2 a.m. In the other, fairies transform her into a swan as punishment for 120 years, after which she dies and continues to haunt the lake. Whether as a ghostly lady or a swan, the tale highlights the tragic outcome of Grassy's forgetfulness. The legend of the great giant of Henley's recounts a tyrannical lord who in death returns as a malevolent ghost. Three brave clergymen decide to exorcise him. In the church, they draw a protective chalk circle, praying with lit candles. The demon attacks in various terrifying forms, and two priests lose heart. The last priest perseveres, and the demon is eventually trapped in the form of a fly. They imprison it in a tobacco box and cast it into Linwin Pool for a specified period warning against disturbing it during dredging to prevent unleashing the troublesome spirit. In Welsh mythology, a gwyber is not a literal viper, but rather the offspring of a viper that drank human milk, either fallen on the ground or, more strangely, directly from a woman's breast. The gwyber is described as a giant venomous snake with wings, known for causing havoc in towns, 
destroying livestock and posing a threat to the local population, often requiring intervention from a saint or hero to resolve. The Sahirath is a ghostly spirit in Welsh mythology associated with the River Taiwai in Dyfed and the Glamorganshire coast. It emits a doleful and disagreeable moaning voice, resembling the groans of someone deathly ill. The sound, heard three times, serves as a warning before a person's demise. Along the Glamorganshire coast, the Sihirath is linked to shipwrecks, accompanied by a corpse light. The legend of the Sihirath is sometimes intertwined with the Grach e Ribbon, a monstrous spirit resembling an ugly woman known for uttering cries when death approaches. The Gragged Annan, also known as Dames of the Lower Region, are enchanting female fairies residing beneath lakes and rivers in Welsh folklore. Created according to legend by St. Patrick as a punishment for Welsh people insulting him, they are distinctive for not having the characteristics of sea creatures, setting them apart from other water-dwelling beings. Found near lakes and rivers, not the ocean, they dress in green and can traverse between the lower and upper worlds. Associated with the elfin cow of Lynn Barfog, they herd special pure white cattle called Gwartheg y Lynn, tied to the origin of Welsh black cattle. The elfin cow's milk was believed to possess extraordinary qualities. Gwergi Garlwid, a warrior in Welsh Arthurian legend, is featured in the poem Pargur and Welsh triads. Identified with a werewolf, he engages in the Battle of Trifrid against Arthur's men, with Bedwire as his opponent. In Welsh triads, Gwergi is a menacing figure, responsible for daily killings, culminating in his death at the hands of Diffidel Mab Disinindord, marking one of the three fortunate slayings. The name's similarity to an Irish mythological figure suggests a possible werewolf connection. The Gwilgi, a mythical dog from Wales, is a frightful apparition resembling a mastiff or black wolf with blazing red eyes and baleful breath. Its name is a compound noun of either gwilt, meaning wild, or gwil, meaning twilight, and ci, meaning dog. This creature is the Welsh equivalent of the black dog figure found in English folklore. Gwilion is a Welsh term with meanings like ghosts and night wanderers. Coined in the 17th century, it's linked to female fairies called Gwilion, who haunt Welsh mountain roads, leading travellers astray. These spirits, resembling hags, emit eerie sounds and cries. Tradition holds that wielding a knife can banish Gwilion, and encounters often involve travellers losing their way. Homes in Aberystruth welcomed Gwilion to avoid potential harm. Encounters on mountains include fantastical dancing, bugle horn sounds, and vanishing acts with the use of a knife. Henwyn, meaning Old White, is a sow in Welsh legend, mentioned in the Welsh triads. According to the triad, three powerful swine herds of the Isle of Britain, Henwyn, kept by Cole, son of Colfrui, gave birth to the monstrous cat Cath Palug. Prophecy foretold ill consequences for Britain, leading to the sow being chased until she plunged into the sea at Penryn Austin in Cornwall. Henwyn re-emerged on land at Abertarogi in Gwent is Coed. Mela Gore, an early Celtic king and giant in Welsh mythology, faced capture and execution near Aberystwyth. Blowing his horn three times, each blast resulted in physical consequences, losing hair, fingernails, and shattering the horn. His son Cornipin rushed to the rescue, tearing off his hound's head in haste, but was killed in the ensuing battle. Mela's other sons, Krygan and Buba, known for their brutality, were cunningly slain on the same night. A modern tale in Penparco tells of Cornipin's headless dog, roaming and crying in search of its lost owner. Maltinos, also known as the Night Malt, is a crone in Welsh mythology associated with the wild hunt led by Aron. She rides with the hounds, Cwn Anwen, and pursues sorrowful lost souls to Anwen, the other world. Maltinos drives the hounds forward with her shrieks and wails, which are considered by some to be evil and malicious. 
According to one version of the legend, she was once a beautiful but impious noblewoman who, due to her love for hunting, expressed a preference for not going to heaven if there was no hunting. Regretting her wish, she now hunts forever in the night sky, crying out in misery rather than joy. Morgans, also known as Mary Morgans, are Welsh and Breton water spirits associated with drowning men. The name may derive from Morigenos or Morigena, meaning seaborn. In Breton folklore, Mary Morgans are comparable to mermaids and lure sailors with hypnotic voices. They are believed to live near coasts, caves, and river mouths, with legends of kidnapping sailors or marrying them in underwater palaces. Some stories link Morgans to flooding and attribute them to the Princess Dahut, who betrayed the city of Yes. According to the legend, Nelferk married a mortal man, and when the man broke a vow not to inquire about her past, Nelferch left him penniless and aged far beyond the years of their marriage. Her spirit is said to haunt the lake, creating an eerie atmosphere in the shadow of steep cliffs that block out the sun from the shore. In the 18th century off the coast of Simea's Head, Peregrine, a fisherman, encountered a mermaid while fishing. After a struggle, he decided to release her, and she promised to repay his kindness. Peregrine kept returning to the area in hopes of seeing her again. One day, she appeared and warned him not to fish on September 30th, 1789. Heeding her advice, he turned back, but other fishermen ignored him and perished in a storm. St. Dogmail's Parish Church records mention a storm on that date, crediting Peregrine's decision not to fish to the mermaid's warning. At Bagbury Farm, a notorious man's ghost took the form of a bull, causing havoc at night. Despite attempts by twelve parsons to lay him, they failed until they trapped him in Hissington Church. In the church, the bull made a powerful burst, cracking the wall. Eventually, they subdued the bull and laid him under Bagbury Bridge, with a request for misfortune to those passing over it. Unwilling to comply, they laid the ghost in the Red Sea for a thousand years. Even after, people remained afraid of Bagbury Bridge, treading softly to avoid disturbing the laid ghost. Till with Teg, meaning fair family in Middle Welsh, are mythical creatures in Welsh folklore, akin to the fairy folk Aos Sea. Also known as Bendithi Mamo, Gwilion and Elilon, they covered golden-haired human children, leaving changelings in their place. These fair-haired beings engage in activities like dancing, creating fairy rings, and live underground or under the water. Favoring those they choose, they bestow riches, but the gifts vanish if spoken of. The Water Leaper is a malevolent creature from Welsh folklore residing in swamps and ponds. It is depicted as a large frog with bat-like wings instead of forelegs, lacking hind legs, and possessing a long, lizard-like tail with a stinger at the end. The creature jumps across water using its wings, earning it the name Water Leaper. It was believed to cause various issues, including snapping fishing lines, consuming livestock, and posing a threat to fishermen. The Welsh dragon, known as E. Draig Goch, meaning the Red Dragon, is a heraldic symbol representing Wales and prominently featured on the national flag of Wales. One notable appearance of the Red Dragon is in the Mabinogion story of Lud and Lefelis, where it battles an invading white dragon at Dinas Emrys. The Historia Brittonum, dating to around AD 829, recounts Gurthion's frustration in building a fort at Dinas Emrys until a boy named Emrys advises him to dig up two dragons beneath the castle. The white dragon represents the Anglo-Saxons, soon to be defeated by the red dragon symbolizing Wales. The red dragon holds enduring significance as a symbol of Wales, prominently displayed on the national flag since its official adoption in 1959. Ifuch Frech, or the speckled cow in Welsh folklore, was a magical figure known for providing milk to those in need. In a story from Denbigshire, the cow's generosity ceased when a witch milked her dry, prompting Y. Fuge Freck 
to plunge into a lake with her two offspring. Similar tales of fairy cows with abundant milk tied to lakes are found across Wales and neighbouring regions, such as the white cow of Mitchell's Fold in Shropshire. Isbaddon Ben Car, the antagonist in the Welsh romance Colwish and Olwen, is a vicious giant residing in an almost unreachable castle. The story follows Colwich, who, infatuated with Isbaddon's daughter Olwen, seeks the help of his cousin Arthur. With Arthur's assistance, Colwich completes impossible tasks set by Isbaddon, including hunting the Twerch Treath and rescuing the prisoner Marban Ap Modron. After fulfilling the challenges, Kulwich, Guru, and others confront Isbadaran. The giant is defeated, humiliated, and beheaded by Guru, leading to Olwen's freedom to marry Kulhush. Isgathirwin Chief Boar is a boar in Welsh Arthurian legend, part of the hunt for Twerch Truith in Kulhush Ace Olwen. Its tusk is crucial for shaving the giant Isbadaran Chief Giant, and according to his proclamation, it must be extracted while the boar is alive. However, the boar is killed by Arthur's dog, Kor, who takes charge of the tusk, fulfilling Arthur's vow. The actual extraction while the boar is alive remains uncertain. And there you have it. If you enjoy our content, please like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. It means a lot. Thank you, and safe travels, my dear friends.